Today's program of Cape Cod Arts with John Murrell is being underwritten by Harwich Junior Theatre, which will be presenting Big River, the musical adaptation of Mark Twain's The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. The show will be performing from February 22nd through March 18th, evenings and Sunday matinees. 508 432 2002. Harwich Junior Theatre, Cape Cod's award winning family theatre. Our program today is also being underwritten by Kinlan Grover realtor Carol Schwartz. Carol offers over 23 years of experience with Cape Cod's real estate market at www.carolbschwartz.com. She looks forward to helping new clients. She gets things done. Carol Schwartz. A few weeks ago, I took a trip into New York City and, of course, had to visit some art venues. The first day I was there, I headed to 1000 Fifth Avenue, the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I decided on new galleries for art in the Arab lands, Turkey, Iran, and Central Asia. There were many beautiful artifacts and rugs, but the highlight was the Patty Cadby Birch Courtyard. This courtyard was completely built by the Metropolitan Museum of Art. They brought in a team of craftsmen from Morocco. It took them eight months to build, and it opened this November. The next day, I headed up to the Upper West Side, took the subway, to Amsterdam and 110th Street, to the Cathedral of St. John the Divine. This is, was told to me, is the fourth largest cathedral in the world. This Gothic cathedral, broke ground in 1893 and to this day is still unfinished, though I really couldn't tell. I decided to take a vertical tour, which began on the ground floor with many general and interesting facts. We headed up a very, very narrow staircase and throughout the tour we took stops for rests and more information. The tour culminated on the rooftop of the Cathedral of St. John of the Divine with a completely unobstructed view of Manhattan. It was terrific. Last week, I headed to Boston to the Institute of Contemporary Art on Fan Pier. I took the elevator to the fifth floor and was drawn to 10,000 Waves, a immersive video installation by Isaac Juliansen. This 50-minute presentation weave together China's ancient ha past with its present. It was terrific. On Saturday afternoon, February 4th, at the Tilden Arts Center, I had the opportunity to witness This Little Light of Mine, the songs of Marian Anderson and Leontine Price. It was performed and conceived by Adrian Dandridge. The program was a wonderful storytelling of the trials and tribulations of these two brave African-American singers. We went from the South to Washington, D.C., to New York City and beyond. The highlight of the program was soprano Adrienne Danrich's beautiful singing. I want you to listen to an excerpt of her singing. It was 
actor Jordan Onquist has worked with Speakeasy Stage Company, New Repertory Theater, and the Lyric Stage Company of Boston, where he first had the opportunity to bring Huck Finn to life this past fall in their production of Big River. He has also had the pleasure of working with the cast of Boston's long-running comedy, Sheer Madness. Before moving back to the East Coast, Jordan worked with Montana Shakespeare in the Parks, the Utah Shakespeare Festival, Milwaukee Repertory Theater, First Stage Children's Theater, and the Skylight Music Theater, also in Milwaukee. Jordan holds a Bachelor of Arts in Theater from Muhlenberg College in Allentown, Pennsylvania. DeLon Grant received acclaim for his betrayal of Jim in the Lyric Stage Company of Boston's production of Big River earlier this fall and is excited to be reprising the role in his Harwich Junior Theater debut. DeLon has been busy at various area theaters, New Repertory Theater, Actor Shakespeare Project, Underground Railroad Theater, Wheelock Family Theater, Roxy Regional Theater, and the Gallery Players. DeLon has a Bachelor of Arts in Acting from the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, a Master's in Music in Musical Theater from the Boston Conservatory. He is the co-creator of a new cabaret in Boston called The Cabaret Series. So my guests today are Jordan Onquist and DeLon Grant, two Boston actors that if you remember from my first program of Cape Cod Arts with John Murrell, I reviewed their program. And look, you guys are here, isn't this great? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, my first question is to you, we always hear that getting a job as an actor is really, really hard. All you hear often is auditions, auditions, auditions. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you have, somebody has to get the jobs. <laughs> um, Jordan, first of all, you know, what has been your experience about getting work? Does it come easy or is it really hard? Uh, it's hard. Yeah. I think the um, most humbling thing out of college, I remember one of my teachers saying, if you get called back, which means even being considered like one out of 10 times, then you're doing a good job. Yeah. And that's not even getting a job. So, yeah. <laughs> um, But I think also just to remember that at, after a certain point, it's not about talent. It's about mm. what is the director's idea for the role and who else is um, in the cast. I mean, for instance, Delon and me working together, mm -hmm. um, is something about the way we look together is going to have just as much an impact on um, the who they decide to cast as anything else. So I think you do your work, show up prepared for the audition, sure. and then it's really hard, but you just got to leave it, try, I never do, but try to leave it there sure. and say, like, it's in their hands now. I did my best. We'll see. So it's yeah. assumed that everybody is, is, like, in the room is talented yeah. and has the goods. And then, of course, you kind of yeah. think, yeah, but I'm a little better. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, DeLon, you're from the Midwest, and you, you have your master's from here, but mm -hmm. you're from the Midwest or no? Yeah. I, I mean, my family's from northern uh, Minnesota. Oh. I say that, but um, I was born in Rhode Island, but we moved to northern Minnesota when I was, okay. like, 10, so that's home. So um, for you... When you graduated from the Boston Conservatory, was it a choice to stay in Boston or go to New York? Because don't we think most actors want to go to New York? Yeah, that's the idea, especially with musical theater. You know, that's we, Broadway's there. That's, that's uh, the place to be for that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I moved from New York to Boston to go to the conservatory. Okay. And the, the plan was to go right back to New York to come and get the skills that I needed and go back and, mm -hmm. and be a star. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I found uh, in my two years at the conservatory, I was doing a lot of work in the professional community in Boston. And I realized there's so much work to be had and so many opportunities. Mm -hmm. It's a very... Um, a supportive community, it's a rich community, and so I really didn't have the desire to jump back into uh, the craziness of New York City. So I was like, why not just stick around and doing what I'm doing? Uh, do what I'm working, doing. stay, right? You know what I mean? And I, uh, there's just so much more that you can build as an artist uh, in, in the community like Boston. Sure. Um, people give you more opportunities, you know. I don't know that I would have been able to do Big River in Boston had it been in New York, you know. Um, there are just so many more of us, so I feel right. like there's just much more opportunity, so I stuck mm -hmm. around to it. Yeah. Do you feel like that your training, you, Jordan, specifically, w prepared you for a professional career, or to just sort of, like, give you an idea? 
Because I'm always wondering, are the universities really doing their job? And not putting anybody down or anything, but did you feel like when you got that degree in your hand, yeah. you were really ready or sort of ready or were you lacking? What did you feel? Um, well, I think it's interesting because I think I had a different experience than sure. both of you guys who have also worked professionally in, um, in the arts. And uh, I went to a liberal arts college, Muhlenberg College, and one of the great things that I took from that was the well-rounded and I, don't, I can't speak for conservatories, but from my experience, yeah. I got to take classes in all these different disciplines, which as an actor or any artist, I think, the more you know about anything in the world, the more you can bring to the table in the rehearsal hall. And so I had that. And then the, what was great about Muhlenberg is there was also studio work. There was, I took my acting classes, my movement classes, my voice lessons. It was a little bit more on me, mm -hmm. I guess, to, mm. to say, I know that I need that because there's some kids that are in college right now doing nothing but voice for so many hours a day. So I have to get as much as I can in this environment. Um, in terms of how to handle a career, that was lacking in my um, okay uh, in my training. So sure. that was, but again, it was felt like it was a little bit more on me, and so I did my best to to learn about it. And I think. Like with anything, no matter what training you get, there's, it's, it's up to the individual mm -hmm. to take whatever they have mm -hmm. and like to put yourself in a position where there's supportive teachers that are going to like fan that flame that's in you. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we all come out of college and, you know, move to New York, move to Boston, move to wherever, and um, it, it's on us. And I think there's a little bit of that personal will <laughs> that is going to sure. overcome you're going to find the training you're going to find the people if you really if it's if it's really what you want to do you just keep doing it <laughs> so it's it's tenacity yeah i yeah. think just Drive. as much as anything else yeah. you know there's a there's a trend now and i it's in my in music business of not going to conservatory mm. but taking voice lessons and studying the classics and studying languages because there's something and i want to talk to you about it there's something about like this is the way it is. This, and you get boxed in. Yeah. And yeah. all of a sudden you get what, what I call as sort of cookie cutter actors that sort of, well, I had this training mm -hmm. and this training. And it, it, for me, it screams a lack of creativity. Mm -hmm. Now, your, your training, Delon, was acting at uh, the University of Michigan, mm -hmm. which is my alma mater, and musical theater at the Boston Conservatory. Yes. Now, when I was, I'm older than you, when I was in Boston Conservatory, for my master, there was no such thing as a musical theater program. Yeah. So this is relatively new. How did you feel your training prepared you? I don't know that it prepared me for the life of the career, and what I mean by that, at Michigan or at the conservatory. And I feel like that's just because there's so much that you have to learn hands-on. Uh, sure. Taxes. What do I do for my taxes? <laughs> I speak you know, of right yeah, now. You know right? what I mean? Like, the, there's so many small things that, that I don't think you're perfect, because you're focused on the craft and, and sure. what it is to actually execute this. But the idea that you won't be executing it all the time, um, yeah. that you will have to maintain your training. Um, uh, I, had, I remember I had a list of playwrights that I was supposed to read um, in undergrad, and they were like, throughout your four years, you should read these plays. And I'm like, when do I have time to do that? <laughs> I need to read plays for class. But now I have the opportunity to sit down and be like, I really should have done that. I have to continue my training to take responsibility for my own craft and do that. Um, so those things I didn't necessarily learn. I feel like they're just something you have to learn, you know, in life and by rote. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of my tr training at the conservatory, I, I completely agree with you when you say that you feel boxed in. You know, this is how it has to be done. This is the way it needs to be done um, to be successful. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't. I I know I didn't fit into that box necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, Especially with musical theater, I feel like it is, uh, no pun intended, black and white. You know, it's either you can sing this note or you can't. And sure. if you can't, then you need to think about something else. A lot of people don't fit into that uh, niche. Exactly, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I'm, for all intents and purposes, a baritone who, who has a roof like everyone else does. But I find that I have to surpass that roof more <laughs> and more and more. And so I have to negotiate, how does that come out of this instrument when I'm not it doesn't really work that way, you know, mm -hmm. and you have to reconcile that. Um, so that, that's been a little frustrating, and I, I feel like as, a, as an African-American actor, um, I don't know that the conservatory 
really fostered that opportunity for me. Okay. Um, and I, I don't know that they really knew what to do with me, you know, or to do with a lot of us. Um, and so I've had to try to figure that out on my own as well. Um, but I guess in summation, uh, it's, it's a lot of it I've had to figure out. They can only give you the tools, you know? And then like Jordan was saying, you have to take a certain responsibility to figure out how do I continue to train? What is my type? Do I want to fit into my type, you sure. know? So on and so forth, so. And I think when people say coming out of anything, it's gonna be hard, like in terms of like then it's on you. Ugh. It is, and I think it, it takes once you start doing it to be like, oh, this is what they were talking about. Absolutely, like, <laughs> absolutely. This is trying to find out like what I'm gonna do for work before this next job starts. Mm -hmm. Like, this is hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And I think the reality of it really hits you, and I don't think any training can prepare you for that. As, like, it's life, and then you gotta, you know, sure. figure it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But it's that, that drive, right? Yeah. Like, I want to do it. You, you have to love it. You yeah, know what I mean? Course. You really do because mm -hmm. um, it, it can be rewarding in certain aspects, but <laughs> I'd say 75% of it is work, yeah. <laughs> you know? And it doesn't make sense to a lot of the other people in your life sometimes that you're yeah. like, you're doing what? And they're paying you what? Like, <laughs> yeah. you're like, yeah, yeah I got to do it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, I saw the Lyric Stage Company's performance that you two were in <clears throat> of Big River, and I loved it. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was creative, and for me, I'm not a real, even though I'm sure that the sets for the Harwich Junior Theater production is gonna be fabulous, because Nick Dorr is a spectacular stage mm -hmm. designer. I love theater with little, as little as possible, and that was your production. I remember your, your, your um, raft was basically sound effects and sort of lights and mm -hmm. stuff, and it was mm -hmm. so cool. My question is, is there, is there sort of sort of growing pains or uh, do you have to alter your thinking about going into a new production? No, I mean, I think that was definitely um, one of the things I thought about when I was first approached by Nina and about jumping on. It was like I had such a positive experience with Delon and with our cast up there. And I was like, it was so fun. But it's, it, it's also, this is an opportunity to share it with more people. So. Mm -hmm and to recreate it. And I've never remounted a, a play, not a production, like a, a role with, for the most part, completely different people other than Delon. So it's, it's challenging and it's exciting. And yes, there are growing pains because I go there when the, there'll be a, a new a decision that's, or a choice that someone makes that's just different. And it's reminding myself and checking in with myself, is this, is this do I not like this choice or is it just <laughs> different? Right. And like, you know, and so I think allowing myself the freedom to be like, well, what happens if we do this? It could be brilliant, could be better, could be, there maybe there's no better or worse, it's just different, tells a, tells a story a different mm -hmm. way. And that's exciting, actually. Do you get to, um, uh, Richard Sullivan's the director, yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Bob Wilder's the music director? Yeah. Do you, do they take your input? I, I'm never quite sure. Or do you just have to do what they say? How, how does that work? Is it, a, is it a give and take? Yeah, what? hopefully with any production, yeah. there's, there's got to be a give and take. Yeah, um, I, I feel like in my you know, brief experience of two days of rehearsing, <laughs> um, uh, it has been a lot of give and take. You know, I, what's, what's great about Richard is I feel like he is very aware that we have done this production and we did it a certain way <laughs> okay. and we're going to come with a certain sensibility. Good. Um, but what he does is he asks us a lot of questions, you know, about things that he specifically thinks. You know, he has a certain idea about something, but he asks us leading questions, not to get his point, but to see what our perspective on that would be. And then mm -hmm. we kind of meet in the middle ground. Mm -hmm. um, I really like when experiences are collaborative in that sense, because you feel you're not just fitting into someone's cookie cutter uh, idea of what this thing is. Um, you're allowed to be an artist and, and to develop within their, uh, their vision as well. You know what I mean? Um, and I feel like we can't, we, we kind of have to do that. You know, even yesterday when we were rehearsing, I was like, okay, well, this is, this is my foundation. This is how I did this <laughs> sure. scene, you know? Oh, it's so weird. Yeah. So let me do that. And then we'll figure out what, what needs to change and, and what, can, uh, what we can figure out, you know? And then Richard gave us some good direction. I was like, okay, great. Um, that's what we're doing there, so let's change it here and so on. 
The show's a little unique in that, from my observations, it's a lot of vignettes, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah. There is a through line, but it's like scene, 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 and really mm -hmm. moves quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. So you guys have to jump around a lot, right? Yeah. 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 So Delon, what, how do you feel about playing sort of this stereotype black, is he a slave? He is a slave. Yeah. Um, a slave running away toward freedom. Um, that's always a challenging question because I feel like the idea is that it's a negative thing that you are p playing a slave. But I feel like if you look at um, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, the way Mark Twain wrote uh, Jim, he wrote it in the context of the time, right? But he does such amazing things with the character that create a sense of humanity because oh. it's all told through Huck's oh, yeah. eyes, right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So you see Huck. Um, starting to tear away these stereotypes slowly, and it's challenging for him because he starts to see Jim as a human being, you know? Um, and I, I can't remember the line exactly, I'll mess it up, but it's something like, oh, I never thought that Jim could care about people the way I care, care about family, the way I care about my family, or, or so on. Um, so Twain does a really good job of, of meeting his audience where they're at, and then challenging them in certain ways. And I feel like what we do with Big River in, you know, in 2012 is we say, okay, well, we can't forget slavery because that was something that happened. But within that, what are the lessons that we learned? You know what I mean? And what's the humanity of, of not only uh, African Americans, but of the white people that were um, their owners or, in the context of that time, uh, let me be more clear. I, f I don't feel like, I feel like the institution of slavery affected everyone. It, it just wasn't black people, you know? It was the status quo. That's how people lived their lives, you know? And, and people don't necessarily understand that it was uh, a psychological thing for everyone as well as white people. Um, and so in 2012, I feel like we really have to think about, you know, how did it affect Huck? Well. He thought of Jim as property, but then he slowly starts to change his perspective. Um, and I, I feel like it serves us to remember all of that. It's um, great. It's yeah. great. And what I remember from your production is the love between the two of you. Yeah. You know, just a strong... That's easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jordan. So, Jordan, Jordan. You, I've seen you in a, a, quite a f number of things. Um, I consider you a really great character actor, and I hope that's not... I hope that's a compliment. Sure, yeah. And you spend a lot of time performing in Sheer Madness, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a show that just runs and runs and runs. You come in and go out. Is that the way it works? Uh, yeah, pretty much. They um, have a cast. They have kind of a stable of actors that they uh, use when they're available. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty much the way that works. How long have you been doing it? On and off since for two and a half, three years, I think. Um, so does this get boring? No. Uh, what I think is so cool about live theater, um, and maybe there's something like obsessive personality, something that's going <laughs> to be diagnosed, but I think I have an ability, as well as being you know, a little bit ADD, to when I find something, yeah. it will, um, especially performing, to really hone in and always keep challenging myself to find new things within it. And I also, with something that you've done a lot, um, there are, of course, there's days when, you know, I've done this 150 times. Sure. And I have to do it again. <laughs> but, right. And it's a Tuesday night and there's, you know, not a big house. But I think what I have to remember is, yeah, I've done it 150 times, but those 75 people that came or a couple hundred people that came, this is their first time and they, they're going to get to experience whether if it's uh, you know Big River, the songs that we're singing, the the story we're telling, this is their first time, mm -hmm. and that's what's ex to me what's exciting about live theater is that it only happens there, mm. and so you need people who are going to do it and do it and do it yeah. again, and to to make it fresh for the people watching, it has okay. to be fresh for us too, and that's really exciting. I almost feel like a responsibility to to almost work harder to be more present, to be more aware of what's happening because. You, you, um, sometimes when stuff goes wrong or differently, or that's really special for the audience. I mean, to how, see how we handle it. That's the only sure. time it's going to happen. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's, you know, if, if they never know anything went wrong, that's even more fun. <laughs> what happened? We had, this, uh, uh, we had this big fish that I'm sure you remember that oh, came yeah. down. Yep. And at one point I was like, 
pulling it off this hook, <laughs> and the, it didn't come off, and so I like kept pulling it, and then Scenery was like, Jordan goes, uh, Jim, uh, you gotta pull that off. It was the funniest <laughs> thing, but like we all laughed collectively. The audience, we because we were like, oh, oh well, you know, it's live theater. What are you gonna do? It's awesome. You know? Yeah. Oh, fun, fun. Yeah. Um, Delon, we only have got a couple more minutes, but. You're involved in um, a cabaret experience, and cabaret is dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. um, I do a lot of recitals myself, and I always my goal is always to try to break the wall down between cabaret and, and recital. Mm -hmm. Like, it's all the same. But will you tell the audience, a lot of people don't quite understand what cabaret is. I, I think of it as an opportunity for um, an artist to take amazing music um, and to express not only the um, I guess the, um, uh, not emotion, what's the word? Uh, the feeling, same thing as emotion, uh, of the music um, that the composer or and lyricist put together, but also to invest their, their sel themselves in it, so their, their lives. Um, and it, it's a genre that is so, um, it's a little ambiguous and it's a little amorphous, um, but I feel like it's you as an artist connecting with the audience through song. Mm -hmm. um, and sharing your life. Um, and what I think is so unique about it is that you get to take someone else's words and interpret that for yourself versus take in a musical, like if I'm taking um, Oklahoma, you know, and I'm gonna sing that in my cabaret, how does that song affect my life, you know? And I don't have any of the parameters that those writers <laughs> put together. So it's, there's so much more interpretation, you know, which I, which I love about it. I saw, um, I actually reviewed Christine Ebersole when she was up at the Art House oh, up okay. in Provincetown. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you heard the introduction to Send in the Clowns and I went, oh God, not again. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I know everyone loves it, but I just went, not again. And she took me to places yeah. with that song. <laughs> you know, because I'm always like, well, I think I know what this song is about and I know what it is in the show. She took it, so it really is a chance for the singing actor to really make a statement. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. One of the things I like, and I don't know how you guys feel, I, I sort of went into recitals and concerts because I really got tired of everyone telling me what to do. Mm -hmm. I found <laughs> like I was a little almost better than doing what I do myself. So that's sort of an opportunity. Tell me about, what is it called, the Cabaret Series? The Cabaret Series, it, yep. Where it's at in, uh, in Cambridge, right? Yep, it's at Central Square Theater. That's mm -hmm. um, the company that has taken us on as artists in residence, so they produce it for us. Um, yeah, and it was essentially the same thing. You know, me and, and my uh, co-collaborator, Cameron Rochelle Smith, we are roommates, and one day we were sitting around and we were talking about theater and what it's like, you know, we weren't in shows, and we were wanting an opportunity to do something ourselves, to have control over our artistic uh, Sure. sensibilities, yeah. you know, and um, there's so much um, music that musical theater uh, composers produce or compose that isn't necessarily in a show that we love, you yeah. know. <laughs> um, so I was like, well, why don't, why don't we just get some people together and not just have it you and me, let's put a bunch of friends together, um, loose, a loose story within these songs and just put on a show. Um, and it's continued to develop into something where we talk about uh, a lot of life reflective things. Um, sure. Our, our, we have one coming up on February uh, 13th where we talk about, it's all about Valentine's Day and the relationship, but it's about how you as a person um, link to another person, but then that slowly breaks down. You know, so we're doing this show and it's great and it's so fun, oh my God, holidays, you know, <laughs> Valentine's Day, and then so, slowly each one of us starts to be like, well, this isn't good about a relationship. Yeah. That isn't good. <laughs> and then we kind of come to a sense of realism and reality about the whole thing. Not bleak, but you know, just a, a little more real, which good. is fun. Good, yeah. good. So you're in rehearsal right now for, uh, for uh, Big River at Harwich Junior Theater. Mm -hmm. It opens February 22nd. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're doing multiple form performances during the school break week. Yes. Is that right? And then it'll run for what, two or three weeks? I think we go to March 16th. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. you've got a long run. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. So do you recommend that uh, the audience of Cape Cod Arts come see you guys? I sure do. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I do too. Show. I do too. Yeah. Hey guys, thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you, you guys. John. Are terrific. <laughs> thank you, John. Art is everywhere. Check this clip out in the New York City subways. <laughs> Mariachis, 
Cape Cod Arts. Try it. Visit a museum, a gallery, see a film, a live performance of dance, music, or a show at one of the local theaters. It's all here on Cape Cod.